dollars. We're the Law Brothers. Call 1-800-222-2222. Your chance to go to the Coast 103.5 private holiday party at Disney California Adventure Park. Watch for the code word to win a family four-pack. Weekdays at 6 a.m. Now at 11, in the wake of a potential mass deportation, the city of Los Angeles moves one step closer to having formal sanctuary city status. We'll explain the vote happening today. Nearly two dozen amusement park goers left stranded and dangling mid-air on a malfunctioning ride. We're live with what you, what we know rather about the frightening situation. And what's the secret to a longer life? We will tell you what locals of the world's so-called blue zones say and the one and only Andy Reesmeyer here with your five live forecast. Glenn, thank you so much. Happy Tuesday to you today. A gorgeous look here at Huntington Beach. You can see not a lot of cloud cover there, but we are staying a little cool. A chance for some rain coming up in your five live forecast. Good morning and welcome to the KTLA 5 Morning News at 11 a.m. I'm Glenn Walker. And I'm Lou Parker. Thanks for joining us this morning. L.A. City Council is voting on whether to officially make Los Angeles a sanctuary city for undocumented immigrants. This comes as President-elect Donald Trump vows to carry out mass deportations. KTLA 5's Lauren Lister is following the latest development. She's live now in downtown L.A. at City Hall with an update. Lauren? We are yeah, Glenn and Lou, this meeting going on right now and a very big turnout. I'm going to step out of the way so we can show you a number of people wearing T-shirts that say make Los Angeles a sanctuary city. Public comment is going on right now. And I can tell you when I arrived here this morning, uh, as this meeting was already underway, there was a long line of people outside still waiting to get in and ahead of the start, a rally outside. no longer contribute to the separation of thousands of Angelino families. The Los Angeles, Los Angeles should be a city where people can feel safe from immigration enforcement. Immigrant Angelinos should feel safe when applying for city services and not worry whether their private information can be gathered or shared with immigration authorities. Advocates from civil and immigrant immigration rights groups and community organizations rallying with the message to city council, which is that they want them to pass the sanctuary city ordinance right away. It's on the council agenda today. It would officially prohibit any city resources or personnel from being used to help federal enforcement of immigration laws. A city councilwoman explaining to us this would formally codify into law what has already been a city policy. Most of what's in this ordinance has already been L.A. City policy, not just since Garcetti, uh, but really for many decades. LAPD policy has prioritized not cooperating with immigration enforcement. But we must ensure that when you call for help from the city, when you call for help from law enforcement, you're not afraid of immigration enforcement coming right behind them. Last week, the city attorney, together with the mayor, released the draft of this ordinance being voted on today, making it public for the first time. But it was called on more than a called for rather more than a year ago. It's being expedited now, coming just a few weeks after President-elect Donald Trump won the election following a campaign in which he stressed border security and promised to deport people who are in the U.S. illegally. If the ordinance is passed, experts say it is expected it would set up a likely battle with the incoming Trump administration back out here live. It is expected to be passed. No immediate comment from uh, the president-elect's uh, camp on the L.A. move at this point, but we'll keep you updated. We also reached out to the L.A. County Republican Party for a response. That's the latest live here in downtown L.A. As I mentioned, public comment is going on right now. Most of the people are sounding off on this issue in support of it. Uh, it's probably going to be a long day. We'll, we'll keep you updated. I'll send it back to you. All right, Lauren, thank you. Well, President-elect Donald Trump continues to name his picks for key cabinet positions, but that remains overshadowed by some nominees drawing scrutiny from both Democrats and Republicans. KTLA 5's Trevor Shirley live in Washington with more details for us. Hi, Trevor. Hey there, Lou. Good morning to you. Last night, President-elect Trump uh, said that he plans to nominate former Congressman Sean Duffy as his transportation secretary. Duffy served as a representative from Wisconsin uh, between 2011 and 2019. He also currently works as a host for Fox News. 
The president-elect continues to fill out his cabinet, but one name keeps getting the most attention. Former Congressman Matt Gates, the president-elect's nominee for attorney general. Before resigning from Congress last week, Gates was under investigation by the House Ethics Committee for illegal drug use and allegations that he had sex with a minor. Gates has denied any wrongdoing. The final report on that investigation was set to be released this week, but it's unclear if it will be now after Gates resigned. Democrats and even some Republicans say the report should be made public so that senators can consider it when Gates goes through the confirmation process. President-elect Trump won the election, fair and square. But that doesn't mean he's entitled to choose extreme, unqualified loyalists to fill his cabinet. With Donald Trump, I think we're going to have a little bit extra energy uh, behind our push to th get things headed in the right direction aggressively. And the House Ethics Committee is uh, scheduled to meet tomorrow to take a vote on whether or not to release that investigative report. That's the latest here in Washington. We'll send it back to you guys in L.A. Trevor, thank you. President-elect Donald Trump is heading to Texas this morning to attend a SpaceX launch with Elon Musk. This is one of many events where the world's richest man and the president-elect have been seen together. Musk traveled to Washington last week with Trump and also joined him for a UFC fight in New York over the weekend. Last week, the Trump transition team announced Musk would be the administration's new efficiency czar. Today's SpaceX launch is the sixth test flight of the company's super heavy rocket, the most powerful ever made. Liftoff is targeted for 2 p.m. A man charged with three felony counts of attempted carjackings is expected to appear in court today. Police say on November 9th, 49-year-old Maurice Latore attempted to carjack three women in Lincoln Heights and Boyle Heights, all in less than seven hours. Two of his victims had young children with them. In each case, the women were able to get away. Latore was arrested after he checked himself into a hospital and a nurse recognized him and called 911. If convicted, he is facing more than 12 years behind bars. A, a suspected child predator has been arrested in Temecula thanks to an apparent kid-rung sting operation. Riverside County Sheriff's officials responded to a tip on Friday afternoon that an adult was meeting a minor for sexual purposes at Nicholas Road Park. A deputy arrived to find a group of about 20 juveniles filming the suspect, 46-year-old William Vandebush of Homeland. Investigators say Vandebush had sent nude photos and agreed to meet the minor for sex. He was arrested for several felonies. It's not known how the group of kids knew Vandenbush or organized the sting operation, but authorities are discouraging residents from conducting their own undercover investigations, of course, for safety reasons. L.A. Mayor Karen Bass is announcing a new program to help Angelinos who had been homeless stay off the streets. KTLA 5's Alina Abovian live now this morning in South L.A. with that story. Alina? Hi there. Well, Mayor Karen Bass, she held this press conference today to talk about this new program that she is particularly very proud of. Now, take a look behind me here. The press conference wrapped just a short time ago, but this is the L.A. Trade Tech College campus, and the new program the mayor talked about is called Career Connect. The program is aimed at helping formerly unhoused Angelinos stay off the streets by providing job training, support, and other services. Now, according to the mayor's office, the program has already helped more than a 100 people secure housing through Inside Safe, and now the next step is to ensure that these people are able to stay off the streets by securing housing and, of course, long term work. The program is